Hi, my name is Vera Morby. So you're in the Peace Corps, correct? Yes. In Guinea. In Guinea. Okay. How long have you been in the Peace Corps? Um, I was in. I have been in the Peace Corps for eight months, and I hope to go back soon. And I think I will do a third year. Just as on like a day-to-day -day kind of thing, what are you specifically doing, or what did your life consist of before you had to leave? Okay. Um, so it really day to day it really depends. When people ask me that question, it's kind of hard to say because um, I just finished the point in my service where I'm supposed to get to know the community first. So I spent a lot of time just kind of going to different group meetings, going to different like peanut and rice fields, going to different marriages, just getting to know the community basically. But um, about once or twice a week I would go to the health center and there I would weigh, help in the maternity ward a lot. I do malaria um, tests. Um, I taught English twice a week in the evening to adults and I did a lot of HIV and AIDS sensitization with an organization that was already established there. So did you see how people had affected any of the areas where you were, or was it all just um, so quick? Well, there was actually Ebola. We were notified that there was Ebola in the country in March. So throughout those months, we kind of had like new case here, new case there. And there was nothing near me. Okay. But so there's an international market in my village. And after the first kind of cases were being publicized, people would wear like face masks and stuff. Which kind of goes to show how little people knew about Ebola because it's not airborne or anything. But, and it was actually, I feel horrible saying this now, but every, all us volunteers and workers at the health center and stuff were like, Ebola's, few cases of Ebola is the best thing that has happened to Guinea because everyone's washing their hands now. But then it kind of, things escalated quickly. What was it like having to leave for, because of the Ebola outbreak? and? Like, how did that process kind of work? Yeah. Um, it was very sudden. I was, there's a whole story that goes behind it. So I was on my way to Conakry, which is 13 hours away from where I live. And I had this whole really fun weekend plan. I hadn't been to Conakry in months. It was my friend's birthday. We were going to hang out with this um, Ghanaian music artist called Soul Banks. And yeah, we were going to chill with him. And we were going to go shopping, la la la. But I was on my way and then I got a text saying that we were all being evacuated. And I thought it was, I didn't really understand it at first. I thought it might have been a joke. But then I ended up having to spend the night at a friend's house in a city on the way to Conakry. And then I had to go back to my village. And basically I was at my village for four hours until I had, so I had to pack my bags, kind of explained to everyone that I was leaving because your country is not safe for you but I'm allowed to leave so I felt very awful having to do that but um yeah and then I was out of there the next day I had four hours in my village and I spent the night in a nearby city and then we were back going back to Conakry and I was out that night so it was with literally within 48 hours this all happened it was a lot wow. and I cried a lot but, I mean, me being so sad just means that I love it so much. And I'm excited to go back. Yeah. How has your experience in the Peace Corps and in Guinea changed you as a person since you left Minnehaha? Oh, that is a big question. <laughs> um, the Peace Corps specifically, I mean, being in the Peace Corps brought me to a whole new, really cool part of the world. And, uh, I mean, any time that you do that, it completely kind of changes the way that you view things. So, I mean, I feel just more of a confident person. I, yeah, I love it over there. Um, could you explain a little bit about your journey, journey about why you went into the Peace Corps and how Minnehaha specifically played a role in that? I mean, Minnehaha played a big part in, I think the friendships I made here actually, because I had a group of friends that really 
we're interested in the world, I guess. We all really like to travel and I don't know, just being around those kind of people that are supportive and stuff and have the same interests as you really kind of um, motivates me to do things like that. And I mean, even just learning French here has helped because I think French really did open up that part of the world for me. So how has your faith influenced your decisions and your sense of purpose in your work? I know that your dad was the head priest of mm -hmm. the church, so how did that influence you? So, like, my family is very, they're very, they're very faithful, they're very strong in their religion. But, I mean, they've also been very open, like, my parents, like, travel to Turkey all the time. So they're, I've grown up with this kind of really interest in Islam, too, and I don't know, I've grown to love Islam. And not that I'm going to convert per se, but I think just like the ideas of Islam has also played probably an equal amount of role in, in my Christian background. And it's just really shown that everyone really has the same kind of goals and perp like wants in life and everyone, we all believe in the same God. And so your plans to go, or you're planning to go back? Yep. And then... So, what like in overall, what are your plans for the future? Like, how long are you planning to be there? And um, so hopefully I get to go back in a month. And so the contract is for 27 months. And I don't know if that's going to include the three months that we've been back in the U.S. But, I mean, I don't have any plans for after. I'm not in a big rush to go back to school. So I definitely think I'm going to do a third year and kind of see what happens after that. I would love to end up in Dakar. Okay. And live there and do kind of public health work there. Is there anything else that you would want people to know about what you're doing or hope for the future? I just think it's, if you have the opportunity to do something like this, it can just really change your whole outlook on life.